This is the Miami Viceiest episode of Miami Vice, and I cannot wait to tell you all about it. Bushido was written by John Leakley and directed by Miami Vice star Edward James Olmos, who you have to respect. For his directorial debut, he decided to take on an episode where it turns out his character is a modern-day samurai who takes on the KGB. Go big or go home. Vice, in conjunction with the DEA, has set up an elaborate stakeout at a public bathroom on the beach in a sequence scored to Brian Ferry's Boys and Girls off his 1985 album of the same name. A DEA agent named Thompson is meeting a drug lord named Herrera inside the men's room to buy half a million dollars worth of cocaine. This stakeout is a thing of beauty. Crockett and Tubbs are watching the action on night vision goggles from a hotel across the street. Switek and Gina are disguised as transients. Trudy is on roller skates, and Zito is hiding beneath the sand, breathing through a snorkel. Despite all these preparations, it goes horribly wrong. Thompson and Herrera enter the men's room together, and no one comes out. When Crockett, Tubbs, and Gina burst in, they find Thompson bound and gagged, and they find Herrera dead, strung up in a stall with the half a million in cocaine in the toilet, and the 500 grand of Vice Department's cash missing. When Castillo checks surveillance footage, he recognizes a CIA agent named Jack Gretzky. He warns all the other agents not to approach Gretzky because he's very, very dangerous. Castillo visits a porn shop, which is a CIA front run by Agent Thompson, played by Thomas G. Waits, and Agent Harden, played by Jerry Harden, who was Deep Throat on the X-Files. Thompson and Harden have an acrimonious relationship with Castillo. According to them, Gretzky has gone rogue. He's married to and has a son with a KGB agent, and the CIA suspects he went over to the Soviets a long time ago. It becomes clear through their conversation that Castillo and Gretzky work together in the Golden Triangle, that Gretzky is in Miami to make contact with Castillo, and that... Prior to the Vietnam War, neither Castillo nor Gretzky officially existed. That last little bombshell won't be explored any further in this episode, but it's very, very intriguing. Castillo's given a business card by a stranger, which leads him to a Thai Buddhist temple where Gretzky is waiting for him. Gretzky is played by Dean Stockwell. Depending on your age and interests, you may know Stockwell as a former child star in the 1940s, or as the endearing hologram Al in Quantum Leap in the 80s, or as the creepy dude who sings Roy Orbison's In Dreams in Blue Velvet, or as the evil Cylon Cavill in the Battlestar Galactica reboot. Castillo and Gretzky are clearly very close. How close, you ask? Castillo actually smiles when he sees Gretzky. Castillo's smiling is one of the most deeply unsettling things you will ever see on Miami Vice. Castillo and Gretzky are having a very lovely and heartfelt reunion, and then seemingly out of nowhere, Gretzky whips out a semi-automatic weapon and sprays bullets in Castillo's general direction. Operating mostly on instinct, Castillo draws his weapon and shoots and kills his friend. An autopsy of Gretzky reveals that he was riddled with various forms of inoperable late-stage cancer, suggesting he wanted Castillo to kill him. Even though Castillo has told Crockett and Tubbs to stay out of the investigation, they can't help meddling, especially after Castillo disappears and leaves his badge behind. Tubbs and Crockett visit the CIA-run porn shop. Instead of Thompson and Harden, they encounter a fast-talking man who identifies himself as a CIA agent named Surf. Surf is played by former Second City comedian David Rashi, famous in the mid-80s for playing the title role in the TV series Sledgehammer. That sounds wrong, but seriously, he played a police detective named Sledge Hammer. At the end of the first season, he accidentally blew up San Francisco with a nuclear bomb. It was a comedy. 80s were weird. Surf tells Crockett and Tubbs the KGB is looking for Gretzky's wife and child, dead or alive. After Tubbs and Crockett leave, we see the corpses of Thompson and Harden in the back room of the porn shop. They've been murdered by Surf, who is a KGB agent. Castillo locates Gretzky's wife, Laura, played by the late Latvian musician Natasha Schneider, a Soviet defector and past member of bands such as Eleven and Queens of the Stone Age. Castillo tells Laura Gretzky is dead and urges her to leave Miami with him. So Castillo takes Laura and her young son, who is named Marty after Castillo, to an island off of Key Largo to wait in an empty mansion for a boat to take them to safety. Castillo entertains young Marty with tales of shoguns and samurai, all of which are thinly veiled accounts of his own exploits with Gretzky. Castillo gives Marty a samurai sword, which is a strong move since the kid's like 10. He tells Marty one final story about a samurai who manipulated his best friend into killing him so that he could die with honor. Laura realizes this means Castillo killed Gretzky, so she knifes him in the back and takes off with Marty. Meanwhile, Crockett and Tubbs are on Castillo's trail. They mean well, but this isn't great news for Castillo because the KGB put a tracker on Tubbs' Cadillac. 
Before they can reach the island, they're ambushed by the KGB. And Surf steals Tubbs's Cadillac and drives to the abandoned mansion to hunt down Laura and Marty. While Laura and Marty hide, an injured Castillo whips out the katana and sneaks around the mansion, taking down Surf's KGB henchmen one by one. At one point, he hides on the bathroom ceiling before dropping down behind a KGB goon, and it's pretty much the coolest thing ever. Also very cool, this sequence is scored to Kate Bush's Hello Earth off her 1985 Hounds of Love LP. Hello Earth, like much of Bush's works, is a creepy, ethereal song. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I love it very much. Castillo, Laura, and Marty make a run for it outside, but Surf, driving Tubbs's Cadillac with his feet so that he can hold his gun with both hands, hunts them down. It looks bad, but then Crockett and Tubbs pop up out of nowhere and come to the rescue. It brings me no joy to report that, upon shooting Surf, Crockett snarls out, Surf's up, dude. Laura and Marty get on the boat to safety, along with plenty of cash from Castillo, and the episode ends with Crockett and Tubbs musing about how their boss is very, very weird and very, very cool. This is a magnificent episode. The mythology of Castillo is one aspect of Miami Vice that's always handled very, very well. In less skilled hands, this could have been ridiculous. Instead, it's a home run. Great script. I love how Castillo, who is deeply protective of his personal life, is only able to talk about his past with Gretzky by presenting it as a series of fables about ancient samurai. Surf, the ruthless KGB agent with a fetish for American pop culture, is a brilliant villain, and having the CIA work out of a kitschy porn shop is one of many cool details in this episode. Full points for Edward James Olmos' direction, too. Five flamingos for this one. Next time, one of Gina's friends will be assaulted by the spoiled and wealthy son of a Bolivian general, and Gina will take it very, very personally. Please join me then, and subscribe to my channel or find me on Twitter to discuss this episode, and I'll see you later. Dos vidanya.